The completion of Henry Flagler's Overseas Railroad in 1912 connected 29 islands of the Florida Keys to the Florida mainland with a series of bridges and fields. The railroad that went to sea took over 10 years to build at the cost of over 50 million turn of the century dollars and over 400 lives lost during its construction. In 1938, a highway was completed using the right-of-way and bridges that were abandoned by the Florida East Coast Railroad after the 1935 Labor Day hurricane. Today, US-1, nicknamed the Overseas Highway, follows nearly the same 126-mile route from Florida City to Key West, providing direct access to the Florida Keys Reef System. I'm southbound down the Overseas Highway to Tavernier on the lower tip of Key Largo. The name Tavernier was probably a corruption of the Spanish name Cayo Tavona, or Horsefly Island, given to the small island seaward of Tavernier Harbor in the 1600s. The Tavernier area dive sites are easily accessible from Tavernier Creek Marina near Malmarker 91. We'll be diving Pickles Reef, Conk Reef, Little Conk Reef, and Davis Reef. We head seaward to the Tavernier Creek head pin. From here, the first target, Pickles Reef, is about 11 miles due east. Pickles Reef is marked by three mooring buoys and two spars. The first dive site is the so-called pickle barrel wreck in 15 feet of water. There is a mooring buoy nearby. The numerous barrel-shaped objects are actually hardened concrete. This twisted metal was once part of a quadrant, a counterbalance used by a steam engine. Shipwreck historian Dennis Trelawitz believes this wreck is probably that of the SS Thornley, a British merchantman steamship bound from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Tampico, Mexico. The SS Thornley sank on November 1, 1898. However, Dennis told me that from 1829 to 1912, there were 30 documented shipwrecks in the Pickles Reef area. Since nothing to positively identify this wreck, such as a ship's bell or nameplate, has ever been found on this site, naming this wreck the SS Thornley is just an educated guess. By diving all three mooring buoys on Pickles, we are rewarded by beautiful coral formations and an abundance of sea life. Large eyes of this long jaw squirrel fish signify a nocturnal reef hunter whose eyes must function at low light levels. About a quarter of a mile east of the pickle spars is one of the most beautiful and arguably largest stands of pillar coral in the Florida Keys. There are no mooring buoys on this 22 foot deep site, but there is a large sand pocket adjacent to the colony in which to anchor. Unlike most coral, pillar coral polyps are extended during the daytime, catching microscopic plankton that float by in the current. The extended polyps give the colony a fuzzy appearance. We're 
jamming about three and a half miles, 230 degrees west-southwest from Pickles to our next dive area, Conk Reef. The red number 12 nun buoy marks this vast area. The first site, the Conk Horseshoe, is situated about a half a mile north of red number 12 with two mooring buoys. Spotted goatfish get their name from the paired barbells dangling from their chin. These barbells are attuned to pick up the vibrations of microscopic invertebrates and tiny fish hiding in the sand. Next destination is the Aquarius National Undersea Research Center, operated jointly by NOAA and the University of North Carolina Wilmington. The habitat was tethered to a surface support vessel in 1994 when this footage was captured. The surface support vessel has been replaced by a large remote operating buoy that houses compressors for air and radios for communication with the land base. The Aquarius habitat allows oceanographers to live and work 45 feet beneath the sea for extended periods of time. This is called saturation diving, when a diver's bloodstream has absorbed the maximum amount of nitrogen possible. It takes about 24 hours for a diver to become saturated. Once saturated, it doesn't matter how long the diver stays underwater, a couple of days, a couple of weeks or even a month. His decompression time before surfacing will be a little over 16 hours. Saturation diving allows scientists and oceanographers virtually unlimited bottom times for long projects such as core drilling to obtain samples of the reef for evaluation of reef conditions centuries ago. The Aquarius underwater habitat is a restricted area. Before diving in the vicinity of the Aquarius, call the University of North Carolina Wilmington Key Largo office for permission. The coral fingers on conch reef are well pronounced and lead to the conch wall that descends to 115 feet. Basket and barrel sponges filter the nutrient-rich waters of the Gulf Stream on the conch wall. From the San Jose Canyon, we're barreling about two miles, 255 degrees west-southwest to the Davis Reef Light Tower. 400 yards to the southwest of the Light Tower is the final dive site of the day, the famous Davis Ledge in 25 to 30 feet of water.
this area is home to three green moray eels. Generally speaking, moray eels won't bite out of meanness. They just can't see very well and may mistake fingers for bait fish. Moray eels are extremely territorial. Their jaws exert tremendous pressure. Divers are advised not to put a hand in any coral crevice where an eel could be hiding. The moray eel's body is protected by a mucus-like coating. They feel to me like a combination of satin and velvet. These eels are totally accustomed to human interaction, but each one of these three eels has a different personality. Any type of interaction with marine creatures, including feeding or petting, is potentially dangerous. If you decide to interact with the fish, do so at your own risk. Davis Ledge is an outstanding site for a night dive. is inching slowly over the ocean floor. I've turned it over. The green body identifies a milk conch. Watch it right itself. I hope you enjoyed the top dive sights of Tavernier. We're heading back into the Tavernier Creek Marina. After retrieving my boat, I'm heading into the setting sun. The dive odyssey continues tomorrow in Isla Morada. I've got just under 90 miles of reef line to go to reach Key West. Now stay tuned for a world record free dive.